All right, guys, before we jump into today's show, I did want to shout out FadeMe.store because we have a new drop coming on May 10th, the Gambler 2.0 collection. This is by far and away some of the best quality product that we have sourced and brought to life yet. I'm super excited for it to release. Go check it out over on FadeMe.store. Again, that is May 10th that it releases. There's tons of live product over there now if you want to go pick something up. But May 10th, stop by. I think you'll enjoy the product that you're getting. And now let's go ahead and jump into today's show. All right, YouTube, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. It is Monday, April 29th. We've got a 12-game, I believe, 12-game MLB slate to dive into in today's video. Like we always do, we're going to go through each and every one of these games. I'll give you my lean on the spread. I'll give you my lean on the, or I guess the side in this case. I'll give you my lean on the total. We'll talk about any other plays, like player props that we like within the games as well. But as always, guys, keep an eye on the pinned comment. That is where all of my final plays will live. Uh, last night, we had actually had a pretty damn good night a four and two night I'll take the cha-ching after coming back from vacation um but what I'll say is after we recorded and started to decipher and lock in some final plays I started I was like I don't really love this slate all that much um and honestly two of my favorite plays were Paul Goldschmidt and the Braves first five team total and those were the ones that lost so uh not to say we got a little bit lucky I mean we could take credit for the four and two night but uh yeah we got a little bit lucky but I'll take it four and two last night, um, which is a good sign because, you know, now we have some new games, new series, which maybe we're feeling a little bit better about that. But uh, yeah, little little nice welcome back uh, from vacation here. In terms of our daily dinger, shout out to Chris Collin, an early one. Kyle Tucker. If you guys don't know what the Daily Dinger is, it's really simple. Just a way that we give some of you guys shout outs here on the channel. Just use that hashtag Daily Dinger in the comments. List someone you think is going deep home run today and then tomorrow I'll pick someone that got it correct and randomly pick someone that got it correct and give you a shout out in the next video so shout out to Chris there guys without wasting any more time let's jump into game number one actually hit that subscribe button hit that like button as well we're approaching 71k which I cannot I feel like we just hit 70k so appreciate the hell out of you guys but we got the Baltimore Orioles taking on the New York Yankees here um, right now Orioles are favored at home total sitting at nine and I won't lie to you guys I absolutely went back and forth um, on this game both last night and early this morning Baltimore's coming off of a meh series against Oakland they actually dropped two of the three and New York takes the final two games against Milwaukee in dominant fashion 15 to 3 15 to 5 to win that series 2 to 1 on the mound for New York today is going to be Clark Schmidt going up against Grayson Rodriguez for Baltimore. If I had to pick a pitcher there, I think I'm taking Grayson Rodriguez like every day of the week uh, in this spot. But the offense here for New York, like I just don't know how we can ignore it. And their bullpen should be better as well. So I guess I just have to say there's value in taking the plus money on uh, the Yankees today. Like I do think Grayson Rodriguez is the better pitcher and, or I'm just biased towards him. I like him more, but man, this offense, 15 runs each, so 30 runs combined in the last two games. I don't know if it's time to fade the Yankees. You know what I mean? Like uh, this is, this is just a team that's on a roll right now. And they're going up against a right-handed pitcher in Rodriguez um, on the road this season against a right-handed pitcher actually last 30 days, which is pretty much the season uh, fourth in average third in WRC plus second in K percent percentage second in walk percentage fourth in on base percentage th uh, third in slugging third in OPS and fifth at ISO like <laughs> it's how can you fade that offense so I'm gonna lean towards the Yankees here for plus money on the money line I like their bullpen um, like I said a lot more and Baltimore's bullpen's already worse and they're super taxed after their last series and yesterday so uh, I do think that this could be a, a decent spot for even if the Yankees go down early maybe they get to the bullpen so give me the Yankees here on the money line in terms of a total I think you have to look at the over here. Um, I would actually maybe bump it up to nine and a half because on ESPN right now, you can get that for plus 115. Um, obviously, you're going to get like minus 110 odds for the nine. Uh, and most books have this at plus 100 for uh, nine and a half. So if you can get it at nine and a half uh, for plus money, I don't necessarily hate that either. I think that, you know, it's just kind of like follow the trend. Like, do we make this a final play? I, honestly, potentially, but, you know, the way the Yankees offense has been rolling, like, how can you kind of take an under, and how can you bet against them, given their last two games, right? So, Yankees in the over in this one, and then no major player props that I'm loving overall. All right, moving on to Detroit, taking on St. Louis here. Uh, Detroit, minus 104 here on the odds at home. Um, in terms of the spread, we're looking at an 8.5 total as of, or the total, excuse me, an 8.5 total as of right now. 
Kenta Maeda on the mound for Detroit, going up against Steven Matz in this one. I would take Maeda over Matz, but I feel like you're picking your poison. On the year, both these guys not necessarily crushing it. Uh, Matz, 5.55 ERA with a 1.6 whip. His FIP is at 4.12, already not that great, but his expected whip is 4.84. And then you look over at Maeda here, 5.96 ERA, 1.37 whip, a FIP of 6.71. An expected whip due for some progression here. He's due to get a little bit better but still an expected FIP of 4.7. So you have two pitchers on the mound that just don't seem to be uh, doing much here. Um, the one edge that I would say, and not necessarily a big edge, um, I guess I could say two edges here uh, for Detroit, which is the way that I'm going to lean, um, is given the fact that at home, in fact, in fact, we can just flash up the dashboard here, guys. If you're not aware of what this dashboard is, it's free to everyone right now. I'll put a link in the pinned comment. You can use it in maybe a week or so, but I've been saying that for a couple weeks. A week or so, it'll be... Uh, uh, just exclusive for channel members, but uh, nonetheless, it's free to, free to use right now, so go check it out. Gives a bird's eye view um, of you know where the edges are and whatnot for each and every game um, with breakdown. So we're looking at this game here. You can see these are all the stats I just listed, right? Pretty damn bad. The offense is against righties and lefties. Pretty damn mediocre, too bad. Um, but then two edges, Detroit's bullpen. And then we want to make sure uh, that their bullpen's not taxed, which they're, one of their middle relievers and closer went yesterday. So, yes, maybe they lose a bit of edge there, but this is what I like. Like, left-handed pitching against them when they are at home, fifth in average, fifth in WRC+, plus, fourth in K rate, fifth in OPS, second in, slug, uh, second in ISO, third in slugging, um, and, you know, love to see that. So that's where I kind of uh, find, okay, this is a, not to say crap game, but it's a game in which I don't love the pitching. I don't love the offenses, but we can identify there against lefties at home. Detroit been pretty damn good this season. So I'm going to lean towards Detroit. They are the underdogs in this one as well. Um, I wonder if a lot of money comes in on St. Louis because, uh, you know, they are favorites, right? You know, this, this, morning if we can get them at plus money but i have a feeling this one could start to lean towards uh more detroit and you're, you're losing a little bit of value there at the minus 104 so i'll lean towards detroit in this spot in terms of a total i don't have the biggest uh of opinions here i guess i would slightly lean towards the under just because uh we looked at what those offenses are i know i'm kind of you know going against what i just said in terms of like oh detroit's offense is so good at home against lefties but like I don't know how good it's going to be, right? Uh, so I'll lean towards the under, but it's kind of scary just because those pitchers uh, are that bad. In terms of a player prop here, we got a positive EV play that I'm liking. Um, it's going to be Lars Newtbar under one and a half bases. You can get that at minus 140 on Fanatics today. Again, under one and a half bases. Um, it's actually minus 178 on most books. ESPN minus 175. Caesars minus 174. Um, MGM minus 175. DraftKings minus 170. Bovada minus 180. Like, this is pinnacle minus 180. This is a this is a, a spot in which, you know, yes, you're still paying a lot of juice at minus 140. Uh, but Newt Bar on the season here, terrible batting, just 189 going up against a right-handed pitcher today in Meta. And Meta against left-handed batters, his batting average, I just talked about how kind of bad he's been. His ERA and batting average and slugging all drop significantly against um, uh, left-handed batters here. So Lars Newt Bar under one and a half bases. If you can get it around the odds that I'm getting it at is seeming like a nice play today. And actually another one in the same exact boat here. Javier Baez under one and a half bases on Fanatics. Same exact thing. Minus 170 is almost across the board in terms of sportsbook. So those are two, um, those are two plus EV plays in terms of, if you don't know what that is, the odds are mispriced on one book. So no, it doesn't guarantee that the play happens, but you're getting an amazing value and sort of a weighted value uh, towards you. So Javier Baez and Lars Noop are both under one and a half bases, paying a little bit of juice, but damn good value. All right, Miami taking on Washington. Um, I kind of wish we pulled the trigger on Washington yesterday for that plus 120, but like I said, it wasn't enough to get me going. Um, but they are just off to the races here in this series. They This game was a 12-9 game yesterday. Uh, so I guess credit to both teams. And it wasn't really even like, um, it wasn't really even a game in which they just scored a bunch of runs in one inning. Um, Miami starts off with six, and they score one scoreless third. And then all of a sudden, Washington scores four and then five. And it's like, okay, they just kind of scored runs, a lot of runs in one inning. Don't get me wrong, but runs across uh, all nine innings almost. So 12-9 game. Um, I guess I'll lean towards the over in this one, even though these offenses I still don't believe in. But um, 
I just can't really see these pitchers doing all that great either. Jake Irvin going up against Trevor Rogers. I could see them not necessarily struggling, but uh, just similar to what we saw yesterday in which there's just scoring throughout the, the game. And then all of a sudden you look at the bullpens and it's like, oh, you guys are worn down and already terrible. So I'll lean towards the over. I doubt that becomes a final play in all honesty. Um, I think in terms of a, a lean here from a, uh, a side perspective, I, I'll just lean towards Washington again because they're plus 130. Like I can't justify the minus 152 for Miami. I don't care who's pitching or if you're about to get four games swept. Like obviously that's hard to do. Like if anything, this is the spot in which Miami would probably take one. But for minus 152, like I just cannot get behind that whatsoever. So um, I'll lean towards Washington as well as the over. But I doubt I play either of those. Just being completely honest. All right, guys, before we get to the rest of the games here, I did want to talk to you about Daily Grind Fantasy. If you're not aware what Daily Grind Fantasy is and what the optimizer is, and you're on Prize Picks, you're on Sleeper, you're on Underdog, all those DFS apps, you need to be using this tool. What it does is it looks at all of, in this case, we're filtered on Prize Picks, the Prize Picks lines that are offered, and then goes through and looks at all of the plays, um, excuse me, all of the odds that all of the sports books, the popular sports books, are offering. Prize Picks doesn't care about odds, right? A two for two. Who is going to pay you 3x no matter what? So why wouldn't you put hell um, crazily like you know juiced plays in your prize fix slips rather than plus money plays? You can see they give you a percent odds to hit as well. So this is literally using sportsbooks odds against prize picks, um, an app that kind of lacks in updating lines and updating odds and everything like that. So for example, Griffin Canning under five and a half Ks, pretty juiced across the board on sportsbooks, right? So you wouldn't necessarily want to take that as a single play, but on prize picks, it's average sportsbooks odds of minus 141 on prize picks. They I don't care if it's a juiced play. You could put it in a two-man slip, a three-man slip, four-man, whatever you want, right? And it's going to have a greater chance of hitting. Same thing with Joe Boyle here, under five and a half Ks. Juiced across the board, but prize picks, 54.3% chance to hit. Prize picks going to be the place that you want to play that. So guys, go use the sportsbooks odds against prize picks. Sportsbooks have been around for years, right? They know what they're doing with odds. Use these for apps that don't care about odds. That link is going to be in the pinned comment. You got to use code GUYBOSTON, G U Y B O S T O N, and you get 25% off. Go check out Daily Grand Fantasy and the Optimizer specifically. It's absolutely crazy. And I'm even giving you a sneak peek right now. If you want to take a screenshot of this, it might help you with some of your prize picks plays today. Go check it out. Daily Grand Fantasy. Again, you have to use that code Guy Boston. Now let's jump back into the rest of the games. All right, next up, we have Toronto taking on Kansas City here. Um, in terms of how Toronto's been, do Toronto's been doing lately, they just got a win against the Dodgers, but they had lost like five straight before that. Um, Kansas City coming off a losing uh, series against Detroit here. And now Kansas City has Jonathan Bolin on the mound, who, uh, to be honest, I don't know too, too much about. Going up against Yariel Rodriguez, who has a few starts this season, not looking all that terrible. Um, I wouldn't necessarily say he's looked uh, amazing, but yeah, not looking all that terrible. Uh, but this is a a, a weird spot because neither pitcher is really anything to write home about and both offenses uh, are not all that great but I think I'm gonna have to side with Toronto we've seen more of um obviously that pitcher and then two there this probably would be a first five play by the way because I almost can just target Bolin um without having to worry about Toronto's crap bullpen um but anyways you know you have a Toronto offense that can contribute and whatnot but uh Kansas City's offense if we go to the uh, dash here and obviously Bolin's not gonna have data because he has no starts this season but Kansas City on the road against righty is absolutely terrible down here right um whereas Toronto kind of mediocre to good uh which is great but you do have the sort of adverse effect uh, you know, effect here, but we're trusting this down here again, remembering that Bolin is on the mound. Uh, I'll lean towards Toronto first five in this spot. Um, another spot I don't necessarily mind is looking at Bolin's under three and a half strikeouts. Um, his last start, at least from the stat site we're using right now, uh, came last year and he only pitched two innings. He did have two strikeouts in that spot, but this is a Toronto team that against right handed pitchers, seventh best strikeout rate here. So I don't necessarily see him coming in for his first start of the year, um, start of the year, being able to go out there and just deal. And, and strike guys out but again could be kind of a, a guppy pick here because I don't know too too much about uh, the, the dude but nonetheless give me Toronto on the money line potentially looking at uh, his under in strikeouts which for odds there let's see if we could find it um, odds there looking at minus 130 on FanDuel for his under three and a half Maybe that doesn't make it. In terms of the total eight and a half, neither one of these offenses, like I said, looks incredible. Not that I, I think the pitching is going to be great, but uh, to get to nine runs, not necessarily what I'm absolutely, uh, uh, you know, it's not my dream. So I'm going to lean towards uh, the under in this spot as well. 
All right, moving on. We got the Mets taking on the Cubs here on the mound for the Mets. Going to be Luis Severino going up against Jamison Tyon. Um, in terms of how the Mets did, only one win against St. Louis. We were on the right side of that. We capitalized yesterday. They get, they win that one in, um, in was it the 11th inning? Uh, but they lost the first two against St. Louis. Chicago lost the latter two against Boston. Um, so both teams coming off of a one and two series against I would say two teams that they should have beat, to be honest. Um, but Severino on the mound here, 2.6 ERA on the season, 1.26 whip, a 3.29 FIP with an expected FIP today of 3.51. And Jameson Tyon, like I said, on the mound for Chicago. He only has a couple starts here, but he's got a 1.70 ERA, not bad. Uh, 1.12 whip, definitely not bad. A 3.4 FIP, not bad, but his expected FIP does jump to 4.23 here today. And he has a few plate appearances against um, this Mets roster, and he's looked pretty good. Both these pitchers have, in fact. So um, in his plate appearances against um, this current Mets roster, 197 batting average, which is great. Expected batting average, 233. But then on Severino side of things, 22 plate appearances so not that much right 190 average with a 152 expected batting average so I think my first look here is to potentially consider the under maybe the first five under in this spot and then in terms of a money line uh, I like the Mets their bullpen is already better than the Cubs, um, you know, and their bullpen should be fairly fresh. Uh, Diaz threw 20 pitches yesterday, but he hadn't pitched the three days before. And then Reed Garrett threw as well. He hadn't pitched the three days before. Both those guys have a sub one ERA, so um, they're very important to their bullpen. I think that the Mets can still pull this one out, and that's why we trust the bullpens and everything like that, because look what happened yesterday, right? It was the Cardinals bullpen that ultimately ended up letting up the uh, the walk-off home run. So give me the Mets on the money line as well well as the first five under uh, and no player props that I like in this spot today, to be completely honest. All right, Chicago taking on Minnesota here. Both teams swept their last opponent, um, but we saw the series a couple, a couple games or a couple series ago, uh, Minnesota swept Chicago, but Chicago swept Tampa Bay. And honestly, to me, it's kind of like, I don't think that I think that they're due for a loss, right? Minnesota is a good team. Um, you know, their offense has struggled at times and everything like that, but left-handed pitchers has been where Minnesota makes their bread. We've seen it. Um, and you're going to get Garrett Crochet on the mound, who I've talked highly of, right? Uh, but he's going to throw 53% fastballs. Minnesota, the best team in the league in terms of runs above average per 100 fastballs. So, yeah, I like Joe Ryan and the Twins here uh, to get this win. Again, I think Chicago's absolutely due for uh, a loss. Do I think that Chicago uh, Chicago's pitcher, Garrett Crochet, Crochet is going to pitch poorly. Not necessarily. I just don't know if they necessarily have the batting to keep up with what Minnesota's done so far against lefties this year. Um, best average in the league, best WRC+, plus, best on-base percentage, best OPS, and second-best slugging when facing a lefty on the road. It is what it is. Give me Minnesota here on the money line, even though I am kind of here for the, the White Sox winning these games. Like, they were plus 193, plus 175, and plus 130 against Tampa Bay in that series. They won all three games. So, yeah, I'll give credit where it's due, but I just don't think so today. In terms of the total sitting at 7.5, um, it seems a little bit too low for what Minnesota's been doing offensively. And, hell, even give Chicago a little bit of credit for what they've been doing offensively. But Minnesota should be able to score a few today. Um, given the fact that they've scored 27 runs in their last two games, uh, 32 runs in their last series. Uh, again, going up against a lefty today is kind of where they can they can thrive. So I'll lean towards the over. My one concern, it's not my one concern. Obviously, Minnesota's bats, this could be sort of like a fad, right? Uh, my one concern is the fact that the books have this at 7.5. So they, they know, you know what I mean? Like this is not some Minnesota team waltzing in, scoring double-digit runs, and they're like, give us a 9.5 total something. No, the books are like, yeah dropping it on the table the total seven and a half today so little concerning there if we are looking into the the lines right in terms of what we're looking at from a player prop um i don't mind a, a few spots here in this game uh, i guess first off and again this is almost me being i guess i can admit a little bit biased towards minnesota um, but i don't mind looking at a spot like carlos santana over 0.5 um rbis here in this spot as well as um looking at you know I guess I just I missed it. Um, 
Nicky Lopez for the White Sox here over 0.5 runs. These are all plus EV plays uh, just due to the fact that, you know, sportsbooks are mispricing these lines. For example, that Carlos Santana one, right? Plus 180 on FanDuel for an RBI. Uh, most sportsbooks across the board have it at plus 150. So is it guaranteed that it hits? No, but you're getting a really, really good price. And this has a lot of plus EV plays uh, out there today. So worth considering, in, in my opinion, especially if I do think Minnesota continues to score a decent amount of runs, right? All right, Milwaukee taking on Tampa Bay. Like I mentioned, Tampa Bay, uh, we just talked about it, got swept by the White Sox. Um, obviously not the best spot for them. Uh, the weird thing here is that, because I would say, hey, you know what, screw it. Like, Tampa Bay should be fired up. They should want a dub, blah, 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 right? But they're only, they don't even get the best of odds here against Milwaukee. Milwaukee's minus 108, Tampa Bay's minus 102. So it's pretty much a pick em here in this spot. Uh, so I don't necessarily love it. Um, I'm still going to lean Tampa Bay because I think that they have a slight pitching edge here with Ryan Pepe Le Pew Papoy on the mound going up against Bryce Wilson. Um, but overall, like it's kind of still a little bit risky, but I think everybody and their grandmother is going to be on Milwaukee today because Milwaukee, I feel like it's like a, uh, you know, it's like the, the, the child that gets away with stuff. The parents, it's like, yeah, they lost two against the Yankees, but they'll bounce back today at home. It's like, well, Tampa Bay is kind of just, I've been shit on for the entire season, right? Like people are ragging on them. They're not living up to expectations, yada, yada, yada. I think that this is going to be a spot where everybody is on Milwaukee and Tampa Bay ends up being this team that wins. So am I that confident in it? No, listen to the analysis I just said. I think everyone's going to do this, so I'm going to do this. Just going against the grain a little bit. But the way that I might do that is looking at Ryan Papua, um or Papoit. Again, I can't pronounce my own name, so why should I be able to expect uh, be expected to pronounce this name i kind of like his over 15 and a half outs because this is a detroit team that crushes right-handed pitchers right but so far this season um pepe Le Pew here has gone 17 18 15 18 and 18 outs and not necessarily faced a lineup against righties like milwaukee so you know i can admit that but even the game in which uh he didn't get to this line he finished one out shy and again i think this is going to be a spot where everyone thinks milwaukee bounces back but let's not act like milwaukee was a tremendous team last series they take game number one they score three runs five runs um but got dominated by new york so give me tampa bay on the money line but i kind of wish or want to wait it out to see if we can get plus money as well as ryan Papoit's uh over 15 and a half outs decent odds there minus 109 over on caesars uh and then in terms of of the total here uh it's even a spot where I'm, I'm looking at that saying you know what i don't know how much milwaukee's offense bounces back give me the under in this spot as well and again i know i'll sound the psycho alert alarm betting against milwaukee against righties um betting on <laughs> pepe Le Pew and betting on the uh the rays seems kind of you know stupid but we might be here for it keep an eye on the pin comment all right, before we jump into the final five games, I did want to shout out the Scared Money T over on the Fade Me store. You can use code FINAL5, F-I-N-A-L, number five, and save 20% on only this T today, only today, the final five fademeat.store go check it out use that discount code i'm not posting it on social or anything like that you had to have made it this far into the video and hear me saying it to know that final five again it's uh, i'll type it right here as you can see it final five just like that that is the discount code for today it'll save 20 percent on the scared money tea comes in black comes in white all colors um, and sizes both available the final five fademeat.store use that discount code now let's jump into these last five games here we're looking at the angels hosting the philadelphia phillies here um philadelphia uh, straight three straight wins against San Diego. The Angels three straight straight losses against Minnesota. This one seems pretty cut and dry to me. You have Chris Sanchez who has looked pretty good um, in in you know it starts this season. He got a 2.96 ERA, uh, 2.19 FIP, even his expected FIP just at three. Going up against Griffin Canning who not exactly the guy that I want to be backing uh, as of late. Um, had, you know, I can't even say he's had a few decent starts. He really hasn't, but he's gone up against some, like, uh, tough offenses. He's faced Baltimore, I believe, twice, and then Boston seems to have his number when they face him, which just seems like an unfortunate turn, because Boston's offense, as a Red Sox fan, it's, like, kind of hit or miss, um, and then he played the the yeah, Baltimore twice, Boston twice, and I'm missing um, one of the other teams that he faced off against. But nonetheless, uh, I think that there's a clear-cut pitching advantage here for uh, Philadelphia, and their offense is starting to come around. So give me Philadelphia here on the money line. 
Philadelphia should see a lot of fastballs, a lot of sliders, um, and a lot of changeups um, from Canning here. They hit fastballs meh, on the season, right? But when it comes to changeups and sliders, they're looking really, really good. So Philadelphia should be a good spot here. I actually think that, you know, right now it's minus 140. Um, I think that's on Caesars. I think that that, that line could get, or that those odds could get even uh, worse as the, as the day progresses. So I'm going to lean towards Philadelphia, hoping to potentially lock it in early. Now it comes to a question of, do we roll with Philadelphia first five or on the money line, right? Because when you think about it, this is a bad Philadelphia bullpen. It just straight up is. Uh, it's not like the Angels bullpen is uh, all that much better, uh, but, you know, this is a, a spot in which can't we just trust Sanchez going up against uh, Canning? It's probably going to be the spot that we, we do it. So uh, I'm going to lean towards the first five money line, honestly, um, rather than the full game, just because I don't want Philadelphia's bullpen to go and blow this for us. Uh, in terms of the total, uh, I'll lean slightly towards the over in this spot. I think Philly's offense is, is starting to get going and everything like that. Um, and honestly, I've seen this at minus, or excuse me, at eight and a half for like minus 110 odds on some sports books. So uh we don't even need to worry about paying for the nine number. We can get the eight and a half. So I don't mind that. All right, Seattle taking on Atlanta. This I don't think is going to be uh, a spot in which we really dive into here. On the mound for Seattle is going to be Bryce Miller going up against Max Freed. Uh, Max Freed. Maybe, you know, he's had his, his rough starts this year. Maybe he's starting to turn things around. He had a uh, complete game against Miami, which is going to skew his numbers. A three-hitter across nine innings, zero earned runs, six Ks. I get it. Um, I don't necessarily envision him, you know, going out there and striking out a bunch of guys. Again, his strikeout line, I want to say, is at five and a half. So maybe it's something that we consider for plus money, plus 114 right now over on Caesars for under five and a half. Maybe that's a consideration. But again, uh, the Seattle team, it's not like they don't strike out. They, they do. So that would be my first look in this game because I can't really decide on a, a side here if I'm being honest because the Braves are so heavily favored uh, in this spot at minus 150 it's making me kind of question what we're looking at because I'm still kind of waiting to see that Braves offense just be Braves you know what I mean like like they they scored what uh, was, I think they scored a lot of runs in their game one against Cleveland but the the yesterday's game we had their first um, five team total over two and a half they only scored four runs in the entire game so I'll lean towards the Braves, but it's the safe play in my brain. And I don't know if that minus 150 is going to be worth it. Um, in terms of the total seven and a half, I, I'll, lean, I'll, I'll lean towards the under. I want to see the offense out of the Braves before I take another over. I, I think that the Braves overs may be on the do not bet list. So if you agree with that, comment DNB. We've been losing a bunch of Diamondbacks plays, a bunch of Rangers plays, and taking... Braves overs has been like the death star for us or whatever. So uh, we, we again, we have a, a do not best fit a 15 day do not bet list coming. It's going to be kind of like a segment that we do where we can't bet on the team once we establish it on the DL um, in, in essence. So, yeah, comment DNB if you like that idea. I think we're going to lean towards the under because I just can't keep taking Braves overs, honestly. All right, Diamondbacks taking on the Dodgers here. Tommy Henry on the mound for the Diamondbacks. Not the best season. 5.55 ERA, 1.6 whip, a FIP of 4.53. Going up against Paxton, who has a nice ERA, but when you look at it from other metrics, whip stinks, FIP stinks, expected FIP stinks. So I sit here and I'm like, I don't know if there's any pitching edge uh, whatsoever on, on either side here. Like, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, well, because Paxton has been... Uh, pretty poor like this is a spot for Arizona I just don't know if I can get there but for the odds you'd have to pay to back packs in here in the Dodgers minus 145 ish seems like it's a little bit too much so Arizona for plus 125 odds at home seems like it could be a play now if we make this a final play and it doesn't hit oh my god this is this is going to put them on the the, the do not bet list the 15 day DNB so We'll see if we make it a final play. In terms of the total 10 runs, does seem like it's super high, but like look at the pitchers on the mound and then look at how these offenses have been and who these offenses are. So I, I see where they're coming from with that line. I'll lean towards the over in this spot as well. And then from a player prop perspective, crapshoot. Like I, I don't think that anyone, like there's been such inconsistencies on the Arizona side of things. And then uh, the Dodgers, I don't know if you can really get much, you know, good value in some of these plays. All right, Oakland taking on Pittsburgh here. Pittsburgh losing two of three against San Francisco. And Oakland, we already talked about with Baltimore, right? Surprisingly winning two of three against them in their last series. Now, I do think that this is going to be a Pittsburgh series um, overall. 
and I think this may be the time to get them because Oakland at home here, um, two game series, but Oakland, you know, had to play in Baltimore and then fly to Oakland here, whereas Pittsburgh uh, already has been on the West Coast. So as, as weird as that is, I do think that there is a little bit of a, um, a spot there where we could see some value, I guess. Um, my problem is Bailey Faulkner's on the mound too. Maybe I'm a little too critical of because he's had some good starts in there. Um, and honestly, like other than what his first or second start, if I'm not mistaken, of the year, he's been looking pretty good. He's gone up against some decent teams as well. So um, I think actually really, really good strength of schedule against teams that hit hit him. Um, but I just don't know if I just can't seem to trust him. But again, I have to have to look past that because Joe Boyle's on the mound for Oakland, who I definitely don't trust. And Pittsburgh's offense should be better than Oakland's, right? So I'm going to lean towards Pittsburgh and maybe a first five play because I think that we want to target get Boyle here and I don't really like the Pittsburgh bullpen whatsoever so if we roll this it probably is uh, a first five play overall um, in terms of a player prop one that I like the look of here it's for plus 110 um, it's actually Max Schumann here under 0.5 bases um, he's only had uh, this entire season reached base three and three games here out of his 10 uh, one game in which uh, he believe I want to say he had a home run so there's four of his bases right um, but again for plus money here uh, going up against a pitcher in Bailey Faulkner who has pitched really well uh, against right-handed batters again back to me like I rag on Faulkner now I'm like hey look at him he's so good so uh, it is tough but I think this could be a good spot to go out there um, and target a plus money play again that's Max Schumann under uh, 0.5 bases here just don't get him base buddy all right that's gonna be a player prop um, in terms of the total we're sitting at eight right now neither one of these teams uh, the WRC plus or any sort of uh, power is all that great I'm gonna lean towards the under here the scary part is we're looking at two pitchers that could, like, and again, maybe I shouldn't be talking about Faulkner, but we're looking at Joe Boyle, who could let up six runs in one inning type of thing. So that's tough, but I'll lean towards the under still. All right, last game of today's slate. We got Cincinnati taking on San Diego. San Diego looking pretty good in their uh, their last series, I, I guess, getting swept. Um, and then Cincinnati, uh, you know, not necessarily uh, the right home about series against Texas. They lose two of three. So both teams should be fired up um, in, in terms of coming into this one. You have uh, Lodolo on the mound for Cincinnati, who has been good this season. 2.2 ERA, 2.1 ERA, excuse me, 1.06 whip, 2.02 FIP with an expected FIP of 3.3. Three nine going up against Max, Matt Waldron, who really has nothing, been nothing to write home about. Uh, the problem here uh, for me is going to be the fact that neither one of these offenses is all that crazy. Uh, so I think that I like Cincinnati and the under. I'm also going to take a peek uh, at the 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 Nerfy in this spot. Again, neither one of these offenses really screams like let's go out there and score a bunch of runs to me for the entire game. So uh, why not say hey for the first time through the lineup, Waldron do your thing, Lodolo do your thing. So give me the Nerfy in this one as well. So that's the under point five in the first inning as well as the under and Cincinnati on the money line. And guys, it's going to wrap for today's show. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, you know what to do. Hit that like button. And then like it again. Hit that subscribe button as well. If you made it this far into the video, go ahead and comment 32. You passed the 32-minute mark, and I cannot thank you enough. Seriously mean that. So appreciate the hell out of everyone that tunes in. And we'll catch you guys in the next one, all right? Peace out.